ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Another sign that shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you is that he changes the chemistry of your body. He has influence over your faculties. They say that your body, listen to your body, it will tell you a story. And the more you listen, the more you hear. A lot of times we don't look at the changes in our bodies and our faculties reading the signs that they are trying to tell us something both physically and spiritually you know that you're getting older when your body doesn't function like it used to and you know that you are getting further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when your faculties are not being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's a very unique connection or chemistry between our faculties and our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these faculties so that we can use them to cultivate our innate disposition or inclination towards worshiping Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'alamun shay'an wa ja'ala lakum sam'a wal abusara wal afida la'allakum tashkurun that Allah God is the one who brought you forth from the wombs of your mothers knowing absolutely nothing. And then he gave you sight, hearing, and understanding. Gave you those faculties. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that perhaps you may be grateful, you may show your gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those faculties. And it is amazing how this same creature, created from nothing, with nothing, comes out into the world and eventually becomes an open disputer about the existence of God. The same individual who was created with no teeth. If you ever look at a child when it exits the womb of his mother, it has no teeth. It has no control over its faculties. It can't see. It can only see blur. It cannot see anything. It cannot make out an image. This is all a human being. And then you give that same human being 20 years, 25, 30, 35, 40 years, and that same human being will debate about whether or not God exists. SubhanAllah. Allah says in the Quran, Alam yara al insanu anna khalaqnahu min nutfatin fa idha huwa khasimun mubin. Doesn't the human being see that we created him from nutfa, from a mixture of male and female? seminal fluid and then afterwards he becomes an open disputer about the existence of God there are some as they're following us on Periscope now who say that they don't believe in a God they'll wait until after they die to find out whether God exists and this same creature who refuses to believe in God is the same creature who just a few years ago didn't even know how to walk or talk and then the moment you learn how to talk you deny the existence of the one who created you, subhanAllah. But these faculties were given to us as a trust, as an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, He divinely inspires and influences these faculties to be used in His service and in obedience to Him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in the hadith al-Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَطْتُ عَلَيْهِ That my servant doesn't draw close to me or near to me with anything that is more beloved to me than the things that I have already made obligatory on him. Just do what is obligatory and that is how you draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us are looking for that aha moment, that aha deed that big great deed that we're going to do that is going to get us over all you have to do is do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made obligatory on you major in the major and not in the minor he said my servant doesn't come close to me with anything that is more beloved to me than the things that I made obligatory upon him 
ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه. He said, and my servant will continue to draw closer and closer to me with the nawafil, with the supererogatory acts of worship, with the voluntary acts of worship, the things that I didn't ask him to do, but he or she decided to do it out of their love. Hatta uhibba, until I love him. My servant will continue to draw near to me with the nawafil, with the supererogatory deeds, hatta uhibba, until I love him. He said, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِي وَبَصْرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْسِرُ بِي وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبْتِشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي عَلِيهَا وَإِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْتِيَنَّ وَلَا إِسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّ He said, until I love him. He said, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِي that when I love my servant, I become the ears with which he hears. I become the eyes with which he sees. I become the hands with which he grabs. I become the feet with which he walks. And if he was to ask me for anything, I would give it to him. And if he was to seek refuge with me from anything, then I would give him refuge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes the controller over your faculties. So when your faculties are in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are telling you a story. They are telling you a narrative. They are telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. But when you don't have any control over your eyes, you look here, you look there, not lowering your gaze, have no control over your hands, touch the hands of this one, typing this one that is haram, doing things with your hands that are not in obedience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your body is literally telling you something. But you don't listen. We don't listen to our bodies. Not physically and not spiritually. Your body is telling you stop smoking cigarettes. Your body is telling you stop drinking. Your body is telling you get rest. Your body is telling you stop partying. Your body is telling you stop having unprotected sex. Your body is telling you stop. But you don't listen to your body. That's in a more physical manner. Spiritually your body is telling you the same story but you're still not listening. Your body is telling you a story and you're not listening. I'll give you an example. خرج أروى ابن الزبير إلى وليد بن عبد الملك ابن مروان حتى إذا كان بوادي القرى فوجد في رجله شيئا فظهرت به قرحة الأكل فقال الوليد ألا ندعو لك طبيبا فقال إن شئت فبعث إليه أب الأطباء فأجمع رأيهم على أن لا ينشروه ينشروها فقتلته فقال عروة شأنكم فقال اشرب الخمر فقال عروة إن الله سبحانه وتعالى جعل الخمر في ديننا حرام ولا أستعين على شيء حرم الله على شيء أرجو فيه عافية Urwa ibn Zubair, he went to go visit the leader of the Muslims, Walid ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Urwa ibn Zubair was the son of Zubair ibn Awam, the cousin of the Prophet wasallam. So on his journey to go visit him, he noticed something on his leg, a bite mark on his leg, that he had been bitten by something that was poisonous. When he got to Marwan, Marwan said, you know, uh, or Walid, he said, can I call you a doctor? Odawa said, if you decide that that's what you want to do, go ahead. So he called some of the doctors, and the doctors took a look and saw that he had been bitten by something poisonous. So they said that the only way that we can stop this from spreading is that we have to remove your leg. We have to cut your leg off. So Odawa ibn Zuban, he said, do what you have to do. So they asked him, well, should we pour you some khamar? Back then they didn't have painkillers. They didn't have a shot to give you and numb you up. They didn't have a pill to give you to give you to make you numb. So in most instances, people, if they had to get something that drastic done, they would drink alcohol. And alcohol would numb you. As people drink alcohol today, people go to work drunk and come home to get drunk numbing them to the pain of life. 
Most of us as Muslims who don't use drugs and alcohol, we are the only sober people walking around in the world, full of people who are inebriated and intoxicated. We are full of people, administrators of major corporations who come to work every day intoxicated or inebriated. While you're walking around on the earth sober, making decisions, and the vast majority of the people around you are inebriated or intoxicated on some type of drug or alcohol, making decisions that they have decided to numb themselves to the pain of life. So they said, Ala naskiyaka khamran. They said, can we pour you some khamar? And Urwa said, no, this is something that is haram in my religion. He said, and I will not you seek assistance in something that Allah made haram for something that I hope that he will give me success in. They said, can we pour you some muraqad, which, which was a type of drink like nabib, mixed with dates, mixed with grapes, mixed with water. Doesn't really intoxicate you, but some of the scholars used to stay away from it. He said, I'm not going to drink anything that is going to make me not be conscious of the pain that my body is going to endure so that I can seek my reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because any pain that you experience Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removing sin from you and raising your st status and your rank so they asked they said to him فَدَّخَلَ قَوْمٌ عَلَيْهِ فَأَنْكَرَهُمْ فَقَالَ مَا هَأُولَى قَالَ قَالُوا يُمْسِكُونَكَ فَإِنَّ الْأَلَمْ رُبَّمَا غَرَّ so a group of people entered the room and Ottawa said, what are these people doing? They said, we're going to use them to hold you down because perhaps the pain will, you know, cause you to lose your patience with what is happening to you. So we need them to hold you down. He said, I don't need anybody to hold me down. He said, I'll remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will suffice. You don't need anybody to hold me down. فلما أصبح أو أفاق ورأى رجله وقدمه في أيديهم دعا بها. When Urwa he fell unconscious, and this is from the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the human capacity for pain has a threshold. So when our pain reaches a point that we cannot bear, we fall unconscious. When Urwa regained consciousness, and he saw his leg in the hands of one of the doctors, دعا بها. He said, bring me my leg. Bring my leg to me. Can you imagine waking up and seeing one of your faculties that used to be attached to your body in the hands of somebody else? He said, bring my leg to me. He said, when he grabbed his leg, فَقَبَّلَهَا He said, وَاللَّهِ وَالَّذِي حَمَلَنِي عَلَيْكَ أَنَّهُ يَعْلَمْ he said, bring me my leg. When the doctors brought him his leg, he looked, his, he looked at his leg and he kissed it. And he said, Allah, I swear by the one who gave you to me to carry my body. Allah knows that I have never taken one footstep with you towards something that is haram. I have never used you in the commission of an act that was haram. Wallah loving, this is someone who had control over his faculties. Can any one of us ever say that I have never used my faculty in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I have never used my hands to disobey Allah. Because your hands, your feet, your body will tell a story yawm al qiyamah. As the saying goes, don't let your body tell your autobiography. Because on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَخْتِمْ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to seal our mouths shut. وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ And our hands and our feet will talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
On the day of judgment, Allah will seal the human being's mouth shut. The human being is the most argumentative of creatures, always has an excuse, always wants to put forth an argument. Allah is going to seal your mouth shut. Your days of talking is over. No more talking. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause our hands and our feet and our bodies. The Prophet sallallahu said, Awwalu adwin fil insan yatakallam yawm al-qiyamah fakhidahu. The first body part that will talk on the day of judgment is your thighs. They will testify against you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seal your mouth shut and he will tell your body parts to tell your story. Don't let your body be your autobiography. Don't let your body tell a story about you on the day of judgment that you are not going to be pleased with. Allah mentions in the Quran that we will argue with our faculties on the day of judgment. That we will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lima shahidtum alayna. We will ask our body parts, why are you testifying against us? Qalu antaqana Allahu alladhi antaqa kulla shay. Allah, the body parts will speak back to you and tell you that Allah is the one that gave us the ability to talk. Allah is the one who commanded us to testify against you. Your body, these same faculties, your hands, your feet, your eyes, your hearing, everything is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that same gift will turn around and be a curse against you. Ayyu ni'matin la tashkurullah subhanahu wa ta'ala biha يُقَلِّبُهَا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى نِقْمَةً أَيُّ نِعْمَةً لَا تَشْكُرُ اللَّهَ بِهَا يُقَلِّبُهَا نِقْمَةً That any blessing that Allah has given you that you do not show gratitude for, Allah will change that blessing into a curse. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his afiyah wal-afwa wal-salama fi al-dini wal-dunya wal-akhira هذا وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته